Let me welcome you to our Monday edition of uh, Lunch with the Pastor, and thanks for coming and joining with me today. I hope you had a good day yesterday, and uh, we had a good day of worship. A lot of folks starting to come back, and that's always encouraging, and people were singing, and I uh, saw some new people there, and, and good to see uh, friends at church, and just you know, to have a part in all of it. So it, it was a good day. And afterwards, people hung out for a while and talked and and uh, visited with each other. So uh, it's a good day. And I hope uh, you had a good day. hope your church, if you uh, attend a different church, that you're having uh, good worship. And if you're still having to do it online, pray for you and pray that it um, meets your needs because it is different. Is, uh, but we still need to be worshiping, so uh, don't don't neglect that. What I want to do today is just try to give you a, a word of um, encouragement of just thinking about what Christ has done for us. And uh, he, uh, Hebrews, which those of you know me know that Hebrews is one of my favorite uh, books of the Bible. Uh, we're in Ephesians at First Baptist, and that's one of my favorites. And I love Hebrews because it just teaches us about the superiority of Christ and and why he's enough for us. And there's always that question and people that that call into question the need for Christ, the significance of Christ, you know, even in the debate among Christians is is sometimes of the nature of salvation, and we struggle with that. You know, is what Christ did on the cross, is that enough? And so here's, here's what the writer of Hebrews says. This is uh, chapter 7, verse 25. Let, let me go back, uh, verse 22. Uh the writer says, by so much more, Jesus has become a surety, a down payment, a guarantee of a better covenant. We're not under the old covenant. We're under a new covenant. And he says, and there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he, meaning Jesus, but he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Now, earlier, Jesus had been talking about the eternal nature of the priesthood of Christ and comparing it that he is uh, after, not after uh, one of the, the Old Testament priests. You know, that's not where his priesthood comes, but he is from the order of Melchizedek, and he, and he goes into uh, kind of a, a description of, of why, and I, and I won't have time to go into all of that, but it's that his priesthood, pre, his priesthood is eternal, he says he has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore, this is verse 25, therefore he also, he is also able to save to the uttermost. Now I'm reading from the King James. He's able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. Since he always lives to make intercession for them, for such a high priest was fitting for us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens, who does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. And then he concludes the chapter, he says, For the law appoints as high priest men who have weakness, uh, but the word of the oath, which comes after the law, appoints the Son, who has been perfected forever. So, here, here's what uh, Hebrews is talking about. Your salvation is not something you earn or deserve, and a lot of folks struggle with that. If it was something you could earn, uh, you could earn it, you could work for it, then you could lose it. But there's not anything that you and I can do in order to be saved. There's not anything that we can do to earn salvation. The only thing that, that we do is by faith we receive what has been done for us. And the neatest thing is that because you don't do anything to be saved, uh, to earn salvation, you don't do anything to lose it. Now, those who oppose that, that idea say, well, what you're teaching is, uh, that if you get saved, you can just go out and live in sin. It doesn't matter. Well, they discount or they forget about 
the whole process of transformation, that salvation is not just a, a change of behavior. It's not just a added on flavor into my life. It is a transformation to where the Holy Spirit comes into my life and the same Holy Spirit that convicted me to be saved is the same Holy Spirit that convicts me about sin. And so if someone says, well, I got saved in order to go out and sin, well, they didn't get saved because they don't understand the surrender. They don't understand repentance because we turn from our past. We turn to Christ. So one of the neat things, and I really do believe this doctrine, is that he says, that I, and I read it from the King James because I love the translation, he's able to save to the uttermost. He's able to save us to the end. That, that's dealing both with the quantity of life, but the quality of life. And recognizing why. Because we put our faith, we come to God through Christ. And since he's able and continues to make intercession for us. So in other words, what it says is that Christ stands before God right now. Stands before the Father. And every time we sin... He reminds the Father, Father, I paid for that sin. I, rem I paid for that sin. That's the point of when he says uh, in, in verse 27, uh, when, when he says that this he did once for all. The other high priest had to constantly offer sacrifice because their sacrifice wasn't enough. But Christ was enough. In fact, he didn't have to offer a sacrifice first for his own sins because he was holy and harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, uh, higher than, uh, than the heavens. And then he offered himself up once for all, which is a very strong uh, word. It's, it's one single word, but it's a very strong word describing that it's, he offered his sins or his sacrifice for sins once for all sins. So it's, it's all covered. It's all taken care of. That for every sin, and again, it's not encouraging you to go out and live in sin or, or to behave in sin. But what it's reminding you is go out and live the Christian life. When you falter, when you fail, that sin's already been taken care of. Christ died once for all sins. And he stands before the Father and he's interceding for you. He's eating, interceding for you to be victorious. He's interceding for you that you would live the Christian life, that you would find uh, joy in the Christian life, and that you would be the witness that God wants you to be. So go out and do that. On this Monday, don't, don't get beat up by the world. Don't let Satan try to remind you of what you're not in your past and why you don't deserve to be saved. Remember this, Jesus died for you not because you earned it, not because you deserved it. Jesus died for you because he loved you. Jesus died for you because it is through that death that the Father is glorified. Through your salvation, the Father is glorified. And what he wants us to do is just go out and live it. So go out and live it today. And remember that Christ is the one who holds you. He saves you to the uttermost. Be blessed today.